When you're working in radio mode, you can configure your receiver to work in either fixed bass or auto bass mode. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the auto bass mode. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do um, is to make sure you set up your bass and your rover. Always ensure that your whip antennas are connected to your bass and your rover. Um, you power them on of course. And uh, uh, yeah, that's basically uh, what you need to do before uh, you carry out any configuration. Next, uh, you are going to have to create your project. You click on projects you click on create and you put your project name uh we'll call us um no no we're going to call us internal radio auto base and click on datum store then here you see uh different datums you see me not 31 here to create you click on user defined uh when you click on user defined we are going to be told to impute the earth. To do that, we have a video on that. But here we are going to click on in our ATM 31 nodes. I click on OK. OK. And there you have it. You've... So, um, for more experienced operators, uh, there are a lot of ways to go about the configuration. But for those who are not so conversant with this, uh, it is always safe to go through using the wizard. So, we click on the wizard. And uh, you click on, we have created a project already as internal auto base. You see it, we're going to select it, open it, uh, we'll go back. Uh, you click on next, the connection. We have connected to our base already. So uh, we don't need to connect again. We click on next, the work mode. We set it on base and we confirm. And uh, there is auto base mode here, but we are going to show you how to create, configure a new one. So we are going to click on add. When you click on add the data link type internal radio, you click on that. Uh, you can see the power is at 2.0. Uh, you can use 1.0, but 2.0 is always gives more power. So you confirm. Uh, RTCM32, you leave that. You click on auto base. If we're using fixed base, you're going to click on fixed position, but no, we're not using that, so you leave it. So we're going to click on save. We save it as um, save the work mode as uh, internal radio. Um, internal radio auto bees auto bees yeah so uh, you click on ok and uh, after that you apply apply this yeah so this will configure your bees after it configures your bees it's going to disconnect and ask you to connect to the rover yeah so uh, you can see that now the base is set successfully do you want to disconnect the base and go to the rover settings you click on yes uh, it carried us back to the connection click on the device model number uh, we know how to so find us and click on it and it's connecting to our rover uh, take, a, take a short while so it is connected you click on the configuration uh, the work mode configuration we leave it on rover and you confirm so we are going to create an internal radio configuration here for the for the rover settings uh, you don't really need to have a fixed base and auto base work mode uh, is just internal radio. So we click on the data link type, you see it's internal radio, that's all you need to do, or beats, PDA, course, or whatever. So we're going to save it as a uh, rover internal, internal radio. For the rover, the internal radio works with whether it's um, auto base or fixed base, it's just the rover internal work mode that is needed so internal radio uh, click on ok and we are going to apply it of course we click on apply we to take a short while to configure as well yeah so that is done so you click ok once you've applied the base station changes there's going to be a warning uh, prompt but you click on ok uh, you're not going to disconnect you just go back and uh, you can see it so now we have we have set up the, the work mode all you need to do is to go to topo survey to start work 
and start taking measurements of course so this is basically how you do the setup and configuration for the work modes on internal radio auto base mode yeah now uh, to carry out uh, site calibration for auto base mode you have two coordinates and uh, which is the coordinate of the country point and also a coordinate measured by our rover so we are going to go over to the point to so our control point to measure with our rover uh, yeah so we are going to name our points otsb and though it's also important uh why uh naming your control points uh, that you're measuring with your rover it's always important to uh, uh, note it with something we're going to call it OTSBM so that we can differentiate from the one that we are going to impute so OTSBM uh, we've taken the measurement good so now we're going to go back and go to our elements to key in the coordinates that we have of the OTSB uh, and yeah we're going to name it OTSB for our attributes uh, you should select control if you don't do that you won't see it on site calibration because site calibration uses only control points uh, for calibration so OTSB uh, now we're going to put in the values of our controls uh yes and putting all the values the eastern the northern and the height and after that we're going to click on uh okay at point successful good so we're going to go back and go over to tools and click on site calibration and uh we are going to add our points uh you can see manual pair and auto pair if you're using auto pair it means that the names of your controls are matched but ours are not matched, we use something to differentiate them, so we are going to click on manual pair and confirm. Uh, for the control points, we are going to go on go to our elements by clicking the cylinder icon and to take us here. And you can see the points. If you did not click control point as your attributes, you won't see any points here. So it's always important to do that. You click on OK. And uh, the GNSS point, you can click the uh, allocation icon to take measurements like at the point instantly. But since we didn't do that, we have that still in our elements. We are going to go to elements and click on OTSBM and click on OK. Use horizontal and use altitude. Make sure you leave those tabs on and you click on OK. Uh, from here, uh, it's you can use more than one point. If you have a big site, it's always good to use more than one control point. The control point should be spread across the sites. It's always important. It's recommendable to do that. Now uh, we are going to uh click on uh, compute and um, when you click on compute uh, you can click on ok and apply it's it's what you to replace project parameter you can replace and yeah that has been done so now you're going to take your rover and place over that control point to compare the coordinates that you have on the receiver and that that you have noted down somewhere if they are matched then you have successfully carried out uh, site calibration and then from here on you can then go to take accurate measurements from here on so this is basically how you carry out your site calibration uh, using the uh, internal radio auto base mode and also setting up the work modes thank you so much thanks guys for sticking with us uh if you like the video, please do well to drop a like and a comment on what you'd like to see in our subsequent videos. Also, don't forget to share. Please be kind enough to follow us on our different um, social media platforms. See you next time.